Hello, my name is Ben Looms. I am the CEO and creative director of Sirenscape. What are we going to be talking about today? We are going to discuss why music and sound at the gaming table. What does it do? How does it do it? I will show you prepping for running a session using Sirenscape and the online player, our tool for running your games remotely in combination with any virtual tabletop. We will do a bit of a deep dive into some sound design questions, how it works and how you can do it yourself. And members of the Sirenscape team will be in chat, ready to answer your questions and chat and say hi and enjoy. Fantastic, that's what we'll be doing. First, a couple of intros, in case you've lived under a rock for the last few years, what is Sirenscape? Sirenscape is the app that brings immersive music and sound to your tabletop games. It's not a 15 minute looped recording, but a fully uh, algorithmic, randomized, beautifully generated, completely customizable soundboard, completely ready to go and to be usable in your tabletop games. It's been specifically designed by me, a, an avid Dungeons and Dragons player, designed for you to use at your table to keep as much attention of that dungeon master on the game as possible and to keep the attention of your players on the game as well. It helps to focus uh, emotions and tension and uh, focus the attention on the game so that lots of fun can be had. Awesome. That's Sirenscape. You'll see a lot more of Sirenscape in this talk and a lot of really, really uh, useful information about how music plays, how music activates emotions, how music and sound trigger feelings of uh, unease and joy and exhilaration and uh, disgust and horror and tension and all that sort of stuff. Awesome. A little bit of intro for, about me. As I said, my name is Ben Looms. Uh, I started playing Dungeons and Dragons when I was about 10, when I received the Red Box on holidays at Smith's Lake. Fantastic camping holiday we used to do every single year. That red box was just extraordinary. You had to um, uh, color in the dice with the crayon so that the crayon would get into the grooves of the dice so you could actually uh, see them, see the numbers. It was awesome. The illustrations were amazing. Blew my tiny mind. I played a lot of advanced Dungeons and Dragons uh, all through my youth. Once I left school, I studied composition at the University of Sydney. Sydney's uh, most prestigious, uh, sorry, Australia's most prestigious university, but then I'd say that, wouldn't I, because I went there. Uh, fantastic, studying with uh, composers like Peter Sculthorpe, Ross Edwards, Anne Boyd, uh, some of Australia's greatest composers. I worked professionally as a classical singer, uh, singing in the chorus of Opera Australia a lot and singing lots of lead roles with smaller companies. I am a pianist and a cellist and a bit of a recorder player and all sorts of things. And... Uh, yeah, an amateur programmer on the side. My career uh, was sort of this strange combination of different factors coming together to make this uh, perfect storm and to make Sirenscape. It's been a very, very wonderful and interesting journey. And um, yeah, it's really, really lots of fun, inspiring, meeting great people. Not getting to go to conferences this year, which is very, very sad. I'm, I'm missing uh, hanging out with the fans and amazing gaming people playing insanely late into the night and then exhibiting in the exhibit hall. <laughs> uh, so I'm glad at least we can all be together this way and um, say hi in the chat. If you haven't said already, tell us where you're from, where you are now, how you're doing. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll chat and engage in the, in the, in the chat on Twitch uh, and really enjoy doing that. Awesome. How did Sirenscape get invented is another question. The last thing I'll do before we get stuck into these really interesting musical kind of things. Sirenscape was a result of uh, me playing at the gaming table as a, as a composer. I kind of expected and enjoyed the music that you would get in film. And it kind of felt a bit strange for me to have silence at the gaming table. Uh, I started making recordings for myself. 15-minute uh, kind of looped recording that would go around and around endly, end to end nice and smoothly. Uh, and I would chuck some sounds in there, a bit of music, a bit of atmosphere. And that was all really good, except it was not customizable, so you couldn't turn the rain on if you suddenly decided that it was going to be raining and you couldn't turn off particular sounds if they were too loud or, or wrong for a particular scene. But it was all right. It was still doing pretty good jobs until 
<laughs> I had a medieval town recording and uh, my players uh, had started to notice a certain pattern that came around quite regularly in that recording. In fact, they'd been in town negotiating for way longer than they were supposed to about exactly where they were going and how much gold they were going to be paid, like typical players. And uh, there was this pattern, this, oh, 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 oh. And after about the fifth time this came around in this recording, they literally stopped the game and all of them <laughs> together with the recording went, Oh, oh, oh. Um, so rather than the sound bringing my players into immersion and making them feel like they were really in an environment, it was actually taking them out of immersion, breaking the fourth wall and making them feel like, um, yeah, they were listening to recording. So I started to try and make my recordings longer, which meant in dragging more and more sounds into my sound editor and trying to distribute them and mix them and set them at different values and all that sort of stuff and volumes. It eventually occurred to me that this is the sort of thing that a computer could actually do reasonably well. A computer might be able to pick random samples, put them in a random direction, apply the appropriate amount of uh, reverb depending on how far away they were, balance them, mix them and deliver them and do this continuously. So as an amateur programmer, I grabbed uh, Python which some of you may have heard of. Got a few kind of really rich media plugins and got that going and wrote myself a fairly dodgy version of uh, Sirenscape maybe 11 or 12 years ago now. And I shared that online as donationware after I'd been using it myself for a while. And people loved it, which is really, really cool. If you use the Wayback Machine, you can go and see what the Sirenscape website looked like uh, many, many years ago. And... Um, yeah, yeah, and, and see what it was like. You can even see some really, really old forum posts for some of those uh, forums that still exist. I was doing an opera project at the time where I was conducting and composing. Uh, we were creating operas from scratch with amazing groups of young people, which was incredible. And the entrepreneur who was running that had a business uh, background in tech. And people were asking for Sirenscape on iOS and more material and how was I going to do it? And I actually literally approached my entrepreneur friend and artistic backer for a for a business contact for someone, in fact, a programming contact for someone who could write in Objective C, which is a bit of a frightening language to write in. And he was kind of like, "What's this thing? Tell me about it." And before I knew it, I was, uh, yeah, writing business proposals and doing analyses of the market and the size of it and all that sort of stuff. And then, yeah, one thing led to another. Uh, he put in a whole lot of money, I put in a whole lot of time, and here we are with this amazing career that I've got uh, building sound and traveling around the world. I was uh, to meet all you wonderful people, <laughs> which was, um, yeah, which which was amazing and will be amazing again in the future, but at least we can be together like this. So yeah, say hi once again, say hi in the chat, ask questions, uh, and we'll endeavor to answer them as best we can. Cool. So once more, what are we doing today? After all those intros, intros, uh, why music and sound at the gaming table? What does it do? How does it do it? I'll show you a really interesting and cool prep. I'm going to pretend that I have basically completely forgotten to prepare the sounds for the session that I'm going to have to run, and you can watch me do that live in front of you. I'll be talking about sound design, how it works, and how you can do it yourself. And yes, answering questions in the chat. There'll be Sirenscape team people in the chat. I recommend you listen on headphones to this because then you'll be able to get the full rich experience of Sirenscape's wonderful, wonderful, rich sound. Right, I'm going to pause my Dropbox so I don't end up syncing things and slowing down this. Fantastic. Right, I'm going to go to here and I'm going to bring up our wonderful music we wrote for the Catan board game. And I'm going to bring up the text of one of my favorite adventures, one of the funnest, fantastic times we had was running Forest Oracle, uh, famous for its excellent excellent boxed text a group of seven men approaches they are following the road east and are making good time neither tarrying nor running their faces are expressionless one is dressed as a cleric of some sort and another is dressed as a traveling drummer the others could be peasants or serfs going from one location to another for harvest season each carries some sort of weapon it is plain they are not soldiers by their haphazard way of walking. They do not seem to be joking loudly or singing as they advance. 
Excellent. Right, I'm going to bring up this music instead. A group of seven men approaches. They are following the road east and are making good time, neither tarrying nor running. Their faces are expressionless. One is dressed as a cleric of some sort, and another is dressed as a travelling drummer. The others could be peasants or serfs going from one location to another for harvest season. Each carries some sort of weapon. It is plain they are not soldiers by their haphazard way of walking. They do not seem to be joking loudly or singing as they advance. So cool. Okay, what about this one? And okay. A group of seven men approaches. They are following the road east and are making good time, neither tarrying nor running. Their faces are expressionless. One is dressed as a cleric of some sort, and another is dressed as a travelling drummer. The others could be peasants or serfs going from one location to another for harvest season. Each carries some sort of weapon. It is plain they are not soldiers by their haphazard way of walking. They do not seem to be joking loudly or singing as they advance. Okay, what about this one? Oops, wrong one. This one. Here we are. A group of seven men approaches. They are following the road east and are making good time, neither tarrying nor running. Their faces are expressionless. One is dressed as a cleric of some sort, and another is dressed as a travelling drummer. The others could be peasants or serfs going from one location to another for harvest season. Each carries some sort of weapon. It is plain they are not soldiers by their haphazard way of walking. They do not seem to be joking loudly or singing as they advance. <laughs> okay, what about this one? <laughs> A group of seven men approaches. They are following the road east and are making good time, neither tarrying nor running. Their faces are expressionless. One is dressed as a cleric of some sort, and another is dressed as a travelling drummer. The others could be peasants or serfs going from one location to another for harvest season. Each carries some sort of weapon. It is plain they are not soldiers by their haphazard way of walking. They do not seem to be joking loudly or singing as they advance. <laughs> so, what does music do? Why does it make that scene change so dramatically? The music is able to completely reinterpret everything that I'm imagining in my imagination. The music elicits uh, an involuntary, automatic emotional response. It works uh, subliminally. That is, we don't think, oh gosh, that drummer just did a cheerful rim shot. Everything must be well, and those people are lovely. And we don't think, um, oh no, there's a minor ninth. I'm suspicious. But we do react automatically to those emotional cues. The music develops the characters and uh, connects emotions and ideas together. Wagner fully developed the concept of the light motif in his own music. It wasn't his original idea, but he really explored and extended this concept richly in his operas. The light motif is a recurrent theme throughout a musical or literary composition associated with a particular person, idea, or situation. So it's a recurring, in this case, 
musical idea that becomes associated with a particular person or an idea or a situation. So, what about this light motif? <laughs> Excellent. So I can instantly see the situation. James Bond has just done something very, very awesome, like he's been struggling in a bathtub with the baddie. He manages to plunge out, and there's a bar heater right there. He grabs it and plunges it in the water and electrocutes the baddie. Or he's just done a particularly uh, irresponsible <laughs> maneuver in a car. Excellent. I can actually see the James Bond that is the James Bond that I um, sympathize with. I can see what his suit looks like. I can see, imagine how he walks. I know what his voice sounds like, how cool he is. All of that elicited by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven notes. Only seven notes. Not even with the original arrangement. This is a resynthesis of that little motif that I did myself. So we don't get a copyright strike. Excellent. What about this one? Awesome. This says to be br uh, brotherhood, uh, loyalty, uh, epic, heroic acts, um, sort of safety and strength and danger being faced. This leitmotif comes to its full fruition as the fellowship uh, crests over the top of the mountain as they're leaving um, Rivendell, I think it is. And, of course, they're in slow motion. <laughs> My PCs always walk in slow motion when they're kind of, you know, returning back to town, carrying the head of the ogre or something like that. Awesome. So the score of The Lord of the Rings is rich with light motifs, including this one. Awesome. That says happiness and, and uh, good food and everything that's worth saving in life. There's a big, big chunk of the beginning of the Lord of the Rings films devoted to establishing why everything's being fought for. And the same, actually, in the books themselves. It's little use getting straight into the strife and the monsters and the danger without having some sense that there's something worth fighting for. And this leitmotif is... All the light meters are used extremely interestingly. This one, you may remember, is used at the very end of the film when uh, the two hobbits, Sam and uh, Frodo, are on the side of the mountain and hot lava is trying to fry them. And you just get this light motif reappearing in a horrible context with a different orchestration and uh, it kind of makes you feel longing for for the home that they've lost and the comfort that they've lost and uh yeah it's quite extraordinary use so a light motif can actually be recontextualized into another setting um so that it gains a new layer of meaning which is super cool okay one more light motif Isn't that amazing? Wow. I mean, if you're in the water and you hear that, or you even imagine or to start thinking about it, it uh, makes you want to get out so you don't get eaten by a shark. Only two notes. Da -dum, da -dum -dum. But um, that light motif is associated very effectively by, by John Williams with, uh, yeah, the horror of, of uh, <laughs> submarine danger and teeth. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I would argue... If you are using only the color of your voice and the descriptive power of your words to paint your scenes, then you are missing out on a whole wealth of potential, a potential for immersion and emotion um, that have been, that's been realized in movies for decades. 
this is not a new concept using music to cue emotion connect ideas uh enriching uh what uh what the words by themselves are evoking but wait there is more of course movies do not use only music the director of bride of frankenstein film that did all right, (laughs) James Whale said, lock yourself in a windowless room alone, turn out the light and put your radio on in such a way that all you get is screams and moans and unearthly noises produced by static. Unless you are a rare exception, you will very hastily switch on the light, fully expecting to see some terrifying intruder in the empty room with you. So there's unearthly sounds of a detuned radio uh, evoke terror and uh, dislocation and inhumanity and uh, blah. Um, Up and coming director George Lucas says, the sound and music are 50% of the entertainment in a movie. Wow, 50%. This is a director who obviously focuses almost... Well, not almost exclusively, but a lot on the image and the way the words are being delivered and the expressions on the actors and the lighting and all this stuff. And he's saying 50% of the entertainment in a movie is the sound and music. That's a, that's a pretty heavy claim, isn't it? Remember to be asking questions in the chat. There's Sirenscape people there and friendly people hanging out who can uh, discuss this stuff. Say hi, let us know how you are let us know where you are and yeah ask questions and and share your ideas as well right sounds can also elicit responses too so i'm going i've argued that and now i'm going to prove it i'm going to bring up the sirenscape element library so here we are here's a red dragon raw already available I like this uh, particular dragon quite a lot because it's sourced by from my own voice. So I'm very proud of how manly I sound. So that kind of sample started with like kind of... But uh, after the wonders of uh, pitch shifting and formant shifting and EQing and layering, it sounds very, very... Epic indeed. Right, any large... Large larynxed creature. You know, this is the larynx, the thing that produces the the the, uh, the vocal noises. It's going to have a big mouth with big teeth. It's going to have large muscles, and will create an automatic, uh, involuntary, irresistible fight or flight response in the human being. So, just hearing this sound at some deep evolutionary level is going to make. The Homo sapien feel uh, uncomfortable, ex- excited, activated. Uh, you know, the digestion shuts down a bit. Uh, the uh, pupils dilate to get light in. The muscles become twitch responsive. Um, yeah. So that's sound as a light motif. Okay. What about what about this one? Skittering spiders. So I'm just searching in the Sirenscape Element Library here in the online player. <laughs> yes not big things this time but tiny little things tiny little hairy things that get up inside your clothing and if you're in Australia they almost certainly kill you once again a um, irresistible reaction especially with headphones stick on headphones if you're listening and you haven't got them yet what about this one Hmm, it's a a warmer feeling, isn't it? A safe feeling, a uh, secure feeling, a source of warmth and cooked food, probably tended by someone kind. 
This isn't, for instance, the sound of a roaring aggressive bonfire, or a house fire, or a building fire, or whatever, or a forest fire, which could spell doom. This is distinctly the sound of a fire in a hearth. Okay. What about this one? <laughs> Isn't that cute? Oh, it's a creature with a tiny little larynx. It, it it couldn't hurt you, really. I mean, it could probably hurt your washing if it if it got into that. So it makes you smile, doesn't it? Makes you feel uh, amused. Makes you feel tender and like you want to care for it. Involuntarily, yeah. It just happens automatically. Okay, what about this? I love this one. Yeah. Oh. So we all know that what that means, eh? Something very big, quite a long way away, probably coming this way. If you've seen Jurassic Park, then it's a T-Rex, and you can even imagine it brings to mind the image for me automatically of that glass of water in the plastic cup. Uh, with the, you know, the vibration rings showing on it. Terrible things. And one more. So that sound could almost happen uh, subliminally, pretty easily. And automatically the, the uh, players, as well as the player characters, would be ill at ease and expecting calamity. What about this one? <laughs> so um yeah not so subtle that one that one's not going to go unnoticed to the table but will certainly uh um once again elicit a series of visions and sights in my brain about what i'm seeing about what danger there is flying splinters sharp nails catastrophe sadness all without having to describe anything all these things are. i just trigger those sounds and automatically the players are immersed in the story and can see the situation. Cool. Right. Just a couple more. Whoops. Okay, right. When you come to cast Fireball, just imagine this. You're, it comes around your turn as, as a player. You say, ah, okay, I cast Fireball. I, hang on. I'll just grab my dice. And people are like, yeah, good. It'll be good. It'll be good to cast Fireball. Just hang on. I'll grab some dice. <laughs> Excellent. That's, um, I'm adding up uh, 11, 15, 17 hit points damage for a failed save. Or I can do that same thing. I cast Fireball and either Dungeon Master just quickly brings it up in the element library or the player triggers their uh, shortcut link that the Dungeon Master has given to them. So I guess I don't even have to say I cast Fireball. I just touch that while I collect my dice. <laughs> awesome, I can say 13 hit points. I rolled worse with the sound, that's sad. 13 hit points damage on a failed save. That's a terrible roll. Um, or it comes to a cleric's turn and rather than just sort of saying, oh, all right, okay, I heal you. They, the player raises their hands, looks to the heavens. And everyone knows that they're going to be healed. All those little magical elements of the sound kind of evokes imagery and awesomeness. Cool. Okay. So that is the power of music and sound at the gaming table. I hope I've convinced you. If I haven't, argue with us in the, in the chat. <laughs> we'll discuss it. How do I do that? And, and how do I, more importantly, do it in a way that uh, creates immersion for my players and doesn't distract me as a dungeon master or a game master? Super, super important. Just a channel ID. I am Ben Looms. I'm the CEO of Sirenscape and I'm talking about immersion and how to use, um, I'm using the Sirenscape online player. This is our tool which we built, which is compatible with virtual tabletops. I, you, can, you can transmit the sounds to your players. So I, we are hearing this little app here, Sirenscape online player. I'm controlling it from a browser window, just in Chrome. And whoever in my, of my friends, whoops, is running um, 
the online player on their machine, on their phone, or anything, will also be hearing those sounds playing. That's how it works. You run, you control the sounds from a browser window in Chrome, and then each of your friends, wherever they are, <laughs> I do it again, I keep making my window disappear, um, runs an online player and they all hear the sounds. It must be a Windows thing where you grab the window and shake it and it comes into the foreground. That's really cool. I didn't know about that. Awesome. Right. Here's a quick demo of how you can do this for yourself using um, the Sirenscape online player. Oh, damn said the dungeon master i forgot to do any sound prep at all for the game that's happening this evening this is all going to have to be done right now in front of these people who are watching so awesome how quickly and easily can i get this done and if i gloss over things or use terminology that's not clear ask in the chat ask in the chat ask in the chat keep that chat going right in the game tonight the first scene is in a mysteriously slightly foreboding elven village and i know there's some lovely music in Under Mountain Forest, which is really, really lovely. So I'm going to use this as my home. This sound set as my, my place where I'm going to store all the sounds for tonight's game. So the first thing I'm going to do is just simply duplicate that sound set. The one you're seeing at the moment is the official version of Under Mountain Forest and can't be edited. This version, Under Mountain Forest Custom 1, is my version. And I can do anything I like with it at all. So I'm going to call it... Friday's game, pink, and that means I can find it again easily by searching, and you'll see me do that quite a few times. So, meanwhile, my players are still messing about trying to work out how many spells they'd actually used last session and lie about it so that they're, you know, pretty much ready to go almost at full power, even though they shouldn't be. Um, so while they're doing that and messing about and or even reconstructing their characters because they've forgotten to bring their characters yet completely. I'm going to search for some things to add into this because it's not quite complete yet. I've been playing Dragon Heist recently and I happen to have noted the name of the battle music which is in that which is very 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 cool. D&D battle music it was called. So I'm going to add that in. I just search in the element library and go plus and that gets added into my uh, lot of elements. Here I am using terminology. An element is a single aspect of the sound design a bit of music or the wind sound or the roaring of a monster or the bears in the distance or the hot day insects. Okay, that's what an element is. And I just added myself some cool Dungeons and Dragons music. I also remember that Avernus, Descent into Avernus came out recently from Sirenscape. And there's apparently some like really cool um, sort of heavy metal style type music. So I'm going to have a look in here. Like kind of rock rock music, which might be good for some of my encounters when when things get really tense. Uh, here we are, Avernus rock music. Okay, so there's the music element which plays the rock music. I'm going to copy that into my Friday's game. I'm going to hit copy, and that's copying that element into that Friday's game sound set. They're probably going to end up in a swamp at some point if I actually ever finish <laughs> negotiating with the um, with the elves. So I'm going to just search for swamp over here. It says there's a swamp sound set. Excellent. A sound set is a complete set of elements and the moods that run them. A mood, what a mood does is it starts certain elements and sets them to a certain volume. That's all a mood does. There's an oppressive heat. I just might copy that completely. Copy to sound set. It's already auto-filled Friday's game because that's where I copied the element to before. And that's copying all the elements needed to make the sound of the op oppressive heat. And you'll see that working later. Awesome. And I know there's probably going to be a lizard folk battle. Lizard folk. Are there lizard folk anywhere in Sirenscape? Mm -hmm. oh, maybe I need to not have space. Ah, oh, there we are. Right, so uh, Ghost of Salt Marsh has a mood with the word lizard folk in it. That's interesting. I'm going to search to ah oh, uh, lizard folk battle. There we are. Awesome. So I'm going to copy that mood as well. Copy, and that does that. Awesome. Good. That's the prep. I'm all done. I'm all ready. My players are now ready for the game. So I'm going to go back to my Friday. Friday's game. And let's see what I've got here. Yep, there's my oppressive heat mood and my lizard folk. I'm going to trigger this night because that's got the inner forest music, which I really, really, really love. 
Beautiful. The inner forest element starts. And I'm going to narrate where we were up to in the adventure using Forest Oracle again because I really love it. The front door is not locked. The sound of gentle breathing comes from inside. When the door is open, sunlight illuminates the room. A young man sleeps on the bed. The room is furnished with two wooden chairs, a table, a couch, pantry, bed, chest, and a stack of firewood for the fireplace. I look down in the text just below this uh, box text. <laughs> so before you ask, it says the fireplace has no secret compartments. Which seems to me like a rather peculiar thing to mention. Specifically, I, I, it doesn't actually uh, specify, but I'm presuming the two wooden chairs also don't have a secret compartment, nor do the table, the couch, the pantry, the bed, the chest, or the stack of firewood. I love Forest Oracle so much, it's so cool. Um, right, eventually they leave and go to the swamp, and here's that mood that I talked about. This mood starts these elements and sets them to all their particular volumes so that the balance is just beautiful. The uh, party starts discussing splitting the party, <laughs> and the sorcerer says, I'm going to cast Message. Okay, so while they're just checking the rules of message and how many words they can do, I type message into the element library and I just touch. Beautiful. What message do you send? He says, he sends the message, don't split the party or the DM will hate us. <laughs> oh, right, I, I do hate them and I, I tell them that you're attacked by lizard folk. So I just um, trigger that and that starts all the elements required for the lizard folk battle and I'm going to add in my awesome D&D &D battle music isn't that excellent good good I remember there are bugbears as well the bugbear overlords are controlling the lizard folk, I forgot. So I'm going to type in bugbear and I'm going to turn on battle cries and hoots and hisses and curses and more curses. Excellent. So I've got those things running just from wherever I started them. Awesome. And I'm going to just save that entire mood. Save current state, so whatever's playing at the moment as my battle and that'll actually copy in the necessary elements the additional ones there we are and they're running now and I have a mood that I can come back to later if I need to good ask questions if you need to now ask the questions it goes back to the swamp I'm actually going to change the name of this mood to swamp so it doesn't look so weird excellent oh did you get poisoned how sad. Don't talk about splitting the party again. The uh, cleric is going to cast Restoration. So I quickly type in Restoration into the Element Library, which brings up Lesser Restoration, which I just touch while they're talking about what gets healed. You saw me cast a cure spell. So there's um, sounds for sort of minor cures like this one. And so they get more and more major as they go along. If you don't find a particular spell, you can actually just instead type in the level. And if it's a first level spell, it will sound quite minor. Or if it's, say, seventh level, it'll, they sound more and more and more and more epic as they go along. Excellent. This is all happening live. Obviously spread out quite a lot more than I'm having to do, but uh, you'll see how little attention it actually takes. Okay, the PCs finally reach the home base of the lizard folk and they attack with almost no decent planning of any kind. So I trigger my mood from before, my battle, and that restarts that music. I'm going to turn off this music and turn on instead the awesome Avernus rock music, which is so cool. And this time, I'm gonna add in a green dragon, which is it serves them right. 
Uh, there's a breath weapon one shot, which I can trigger when it breathes. And that green dragon roar. Okay, so I'm going to start those. There's green dragon roar. <laughs> green dragon breathe, so I just touch that. Awesome, that kills one of the PCs. <laughs> so I'm going to trigger a Wilhelm scream. One of the rolls of one on their death save. So it's that trombone. But eventually, will we let them succeed? I'm going to push the swamps down again and trigger a victory sting for them. So there you go. That's <laughs> that's me prepping and running a game in front of you. And that's how easy it is. And I made that tool for me so it would be easy for me and so I could concentrate quickly, quickly and easily find the things I need. Um, and yeah, look, we're working on making search and things like that even smoother. Even smoother and finding things and organizing things. Awesome. Ask questions now in the chat. Meanwhile, I'm going to answer some of the questions that people have asked in the past when I do this seminar. Um, so yeah, can I use Sirenscape in my stream is one of the uh, questions that people ask frequently. Yes, we made Sirenscape uh, specifically available to people making podcasts and YouTube um, videos and streams on Twitch. Uh, it's all original content um, or Creative Commons attribution samples, some of them. Uh, if you go to our FAQ page, search for Sirenscape FAQ, you'll be able to find all the info you need um, specifically about getting started with us. And um, we love to connect with people who are streaming and using Sirenscape. And uh, yeah, we love sharing tweets and things and, and, and giving your program a boost when we are able. Yes, yes, yes. Who needs to pay to run a remote game is another question, which is very, very important. Right. To unlock remote play, uh, the Dungeon Master needs a Super Siren subscription. And the players just need a normal registered account. And they don't need to pay anything at all. How do I get started if I am interested is another very important question. How do I get started? What do you need to do now? If you're interested in giving Sirenscape a go, just go to the sirenscape.com website and uh, download the Fantasy Player, which is kind of an offline version. You can download content with the internet and then play it without the internet later. Um, you don't even have to actually register an account or anything to use that. You can just say, not now, don't even sign in, and that comes with 10 free sound sets. Uh, the Red Dragon that you heard, uh, a, a Medieval Town, the Bugbear Battle that you saw me using, Storm Sounds with lovely thunder and rain. So very, very useful. There's also the Sci-Fi Player, which you can also use without registering at all, and it comes with 10 free sound sets as, as well, including some really, really cool... Um, uh, cyberpunk content so yes once you've done that then you can buy content uh one by one so you could buy the swamp sound set and use that at your table and then yeah there's subscription levels to unlock the entire uh back catalog the super sirens subscription gives you access to everything sirenscape and what's cool with the sirenscape subscription which is not quite normal is that everything that is released newly and freshly during the period of your active subscription you actually gain permanent ownership of as if you've just bought it. So if we uh, release the Swamp Sunset while you're a subscriber, you now own it. So if for some reason you have to stop your subscription, you're not left without any content at all, but you're left with a lovely library of stuff you um, collected during your active sub. Cool. Uh, we have licenses with Dungeons & Dragons, uh, Pathfinder, Starfinder, Cyberpunk Red, uh, Call of Cthulhu. The Cthulhu stuff is super, super, super cool. Um, yeah, it's wonderful to be supporting the Dungeons & Dragons adventures, including Dragon Heist, Ghost of Salt Marsh, Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Uh, I can talk about Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, and there's some really, really other cool, cool con um, content coming soon as well. Yes, keep asking questions. I'm just about running out of time. It was lovely to spend this time with you. Thank you for being with us. I'm going to play some random content um, and enter the chat um, so I can continue uh, to chat with you uh, and answer questions and, and interact and really enjoy 
Um, yeah, being a part of PAX, it is sad not to be with you all. Last PAX uh, Unplugged in Philadelphia, I played uh, the game Ten Candles. Uh, Jason Bullman game mastered that game and it was one of uh it was like a mountaintop experience in terms of uh, role playing it was absolutely incredible we played from 10 p.m to 3 a.m and then uh had to man the stand <laughs> during the day which was kind of insane but that's what cons are all about and uh that's why i'm sad i'm not there and uh looking forward to being back with you all again continue to ask questions we have a little bit of time left um so i'll while i play some cool music um, we can answer those questions and uh, connect with you in other ways. Yes. And remember, if you ever have any support requests, go to uh, email support at sirenscape.com. There's a lovely team of support people who can answer your questions, including me, as quickly as possible. We are going to be releasing some cool stuff on our new Twitch channel. So go to uh, twitch.tv sirenscape if you've got a moment and just hit follow so you can see those excellent stuffs as they appear. I have been um, Benjamin Looms um, and I've enjoyed spending this time with you and I hope to see you at a con soon. Do make sure you come to the Sirenscape stand and shake our hands if we're ever able to do that again. Uh, Excellent. Miss you all. Uh, Game on most importantly and even more importantly than that, sort of do it in the most noisy way you possibly can. (laughs) Awesome. See you. Enjoy the show. Right. Some sounds. If we must.
Funny, I don't feel any stronger. Maybe because I'm always angry. I'm always on top condition. Stands to reason. I'm a monster. Are you going to try to kill me? Didn't think so. Go kill some goblins or something. On second thought, goblins aren't monsters. They're people. So maybe you should call yourself a people killer. 